Hi, this is Dr. Kraus with a demo on how to use my DigComp library, which is short for Digital Compensator, to help an Arduino do high-pass and low-pass filtering of dynamic signals. So you're going to want to be able to do a pound include DigComp.h. That is available on my GitHub page. And so you could download that as a zip file or clone it using the git clone command depending on your operating system. Some of those things are harder or easier than others. In order for this pound include to work, the code has to be saved into the Arduino libraries folder in a folder called digcomp. So depending on your operating system, you should have a documents folder somewhere. And when you installed the Arduino IDE, it should have created a folder underneath documents or my documents or whatever called Arduino. And then underneath Arduino, it sh you probably should already have a folder called libraries. And then any, um, for example, if you're using the new ping for Sonar or if you've got Pololu stuff, um, all those should already be installed. And so I've got a folder called digcomp. And under digcomp is digcomp.cpp and digcomp.h. So if those two files are in a folder with the same name, digcomp, in your libraries, in your Arduino, in your documents, then this should work and you're ready to go. Now to use the code, you need the A and B numerator and denominator digital compensator coefficients. We'll get those from the Python control library in just a second. So I've created a, so this code right about here is what it takes to initialize a filter instance. This is an object or a class. Um, so I've got a floating point value to store the output of my filter. And then I've got my numerator coefficients. So this is like the B0 and B1 of the digital compensator. This is the A0 and A1 of the digital compensator. And then I also need a raise to store a short history of the inputs and outputs so that I can, for example, this is going to multiply. Uh, let me think about that. So the, the A coefficient, A0 is the current output. A1 is the coefficient on the previous output. B0 is the coefficient on the current input. And B1 is the coefficient on the previous input. And so I need arrays to store previous inputs and previous outputs to do the math. And so I create those. And so this might be just a little clunky, but I've got my B coefficient as an input to the filter class. This is the name of my filter instance. Then I've got comma my A coefficients for the denominator. Those two arrays for storing the input and output histories and then the size of the input and output history. And as I think about it, I'm not sure why that's two different numbers because I can't imagine that you'd ever have different, yeah, maybe you could have fewer numerator coefficients than up. So this is the length of the numerator, I'm pretty sure, and the length of the output uh, uh, denominator. So then um, when I want to get ready to actually use it, it mainly has one method. It's called calc output or calc out. And so it takes the new input value and returns the new output value doing the digital compensator filter calculations in the background. So let's uh, see this. Uh, let's do two things. So under filter, so if I want to, how do I find the A and V coefficients? So for my low pass filter, I'm defining a continuous time transfer function. So this is P over S plus P as like an RC first order filter. When I execute that code, it spits out P over S plus P, where my P here is 10 times 2 times pi, or 20 pi. Then I've got to convert that to digital. And so I'm using the Python control modules matlab.c2d function with a specific uh, time step. So I'm passing in the continuous time transfer function, the time step, and then what method I want to use for the C2D conversion. And it spits out this. So this, these are the A and B coefficients. Now we just want to grab those and get them into a form that I can simply, where'd that go? Oh, you're killing me. Ah, uh, there we go. So that I can copy and paste them here. So I execute that. 
If I grab the numerator and use the NumPy squeeze method to get rid of extra dimensions on it, I have these values, which are exactly the values that I want to copy and paste, but I also just wrote a little helper function to put them in curly brackets and add a semicolon. And so when I want to print out my B coefficients, I can now grab that, copy it, and paste it right here. And then similarly, I can print out the A coefficients, grab them, copy, and paste them right here. And the only thing that makes this a first order low pass filter is where these A and B coefficients come from. If I needed to create a high pass filter, I just define a different continuous time transfer function and then do its C2D and then find its coefficients. And if I were to paste that and that, so all I'm trying to say is that the digcomp module library over in Arduino has no idea that this is a first order low pass filter. It just knows that it has some numerator coefficients and some denominator coefficients of the digital compensator. Okay, so now let's see this in action. I uh, have my little robot here. I'm going to stand this thing up. It's got an MPU 6050 accelerometer that you can kind of not really see. And I'm going to just kind of by hand give it some inputs and we'll see the filter doing its thing. So I'm going to connect to it via serial from my Jupyter Notebook. Mm, that's acting a little strangely. Fantastic. Okay, I think we're ready to go. So it says, I'm ready. Tell me if you want to start a test or zero a test out. I got some little helper code here. So I'm going to stand this thing up and zero out the accelerometer. It's going to print out the results of that. And then I'm going to get ready to start a test. And then, like I said, I'm just going to provide my own little accelerometer input, gyroscope input here by my hand. And then we've captured the data through the serial connection and can now plot that data. Notice that my DT is super rock solid. The main thing there is that I'm using a timer ISR and I'm not printing that many things to the serial monitor. So it's working perfectly with a 0 0.005 or 200 hertz uh, DT. And then note, I zoomed in on that, let me undo that. So the blue is the unfiltered, and then let's go ahead and zoom in on, say, 2.5 to 4. And you can kind of see that the green line has a little bit of lag behind the blue line, but also doesn't go quite as high in its peaks and valleys. So we are, in fact, getting a low-pass filtered accelerometer. If we wanted it to be more aggressive or less aggressive, we would just come over here and change the omega LP to something higher or lower, ultimately come up with some different A and B coefficients here and here, and then copy and paste those back into the Arduino code to change the cutoff frequency of the Arduino. And like I said, if I wanted to create a high pass, so one of the other things we're doing on this robot is calculating the tilt angle and you'll note that it doesn't quite come back to zero with a complementary filter that I borrowed off of the internet. Um, so if I wanted to see that change I could create a high pass filter and all I would need to do would be to kind of duplicate this stuff um, and so I could start a high pass and so I might call this tilt filt and eh, it's a complementary filter so I'm going to call it comp filt and then I would need to just replace LP with HP not that that does anything magical but it would just remind me of which is which and then I need to come up with new A and B coefficients so if I went back over to my filter design thing and said I want to try uh, a half a hertz high pass so I don't know if that's aggressive or not aggressive um, and again I've got my same DT already defined uh, based on my timer interrupt. 
And so that's the B coefficients and A coefficients of the high pass filter. So if I came over here and pasted that and killed that and pasted that and killed that, I now have a high pass filter ready to go. Um, and I'm calling it comp underscore filt and right. So if I came to here, I could define comp underscore filt as being my high pass filter dot calc out of comp angle Y. And then I could just add comp filt to the things that I'm printing, I would need a comma here. Um, yeah, maybe that's not the smartest place to put it. Um, I'm gonna move you up here. Now, the tricky part about this is that it will then mean that I gotta go through and modify my Python code that unpacks the data, because I had things hard-coded to specific columns. Um, but I think that's all it would take to start outputting the complementary filter, um, let's try that really fast, make sure I don't have any obvious issues. And again, if I get done with this and I decide I don't, it's too aggressive or not aggressive enough, all I've gotta do is change the omega of my high pass corner frequency, I'll get new B coefficients and new A coefficients and call it good. So you could stop watching at this point if you wanted to, but I'm gonna go ahead and test it out. It might take me a minute to fix my Python code to incorporate my new data column. So I will come down here. Having reprogrammed, I now need to reconnect my serial Hopefully see the same welcome message uh, off of my menu. Flush the serial. Don't necessarily need to redefine those things. And then zero it. Print out the results of the zeroing. Start the test. And then um, it's going to print some data, but the col now that's interesting. My DT has gotten just a little bit off, and I don't know if that means I'm starting to print too much stuff. Um, and I should rechange my labels, right? So, but it'll turn out that column two was my complementary filter that has a little bit of a DC offset, and then comp three is my high pass filtered complementary filter, which you can see, I think it doesn't have the offset, but we have created this little weird overshoot right here that may or may not come back to haunt us. But it's working. If I don't like the frequency, I can come back over here and make it less aggressive by just changing omega. And then I would get new A and B coefficients to paste back into my Arduino code, and I could try it again from there. So I think that's enough to get you started. Let me know if you have questions. I'm going to finish this for before I sign off. I don't care if you necessarily watch me do this. Okay. Done. And then I would just upload it and retest it and see what happens. Thanks.